In this video, we are going to talk about substream of your IP camera and how you should use it in Blue Iris, why you should use it, how to turn it on. So let's get started. So here's my little frozen butterfly cam um, that we set up in another video. I've logged into the camera and turned off the watermark and turned off overlays and switched it around, gotten it kind of set up. But I have not set up substream. So if I right click on this camera and go to camera settings, you'll see I only have the mainstream set up. Now, what you first want to do is go into the camera itself, log into the camera. So let's do that. And again, always change default passwords. And for this particular camera, we're going to go over to setup. You can do all kinds of things when you log into the camera, exposure and all that. Um, we're going to go over to video. And you want to make sure that substream is enabled. Some cameras come by default enabled, some do not. Um, but you want to make sure that that's enabled. So you have your mainstream and your substream. You can also tweak the resolution. You can tweak the frame rate. So for example, on 1080p, 1920 by 1080, I can go all the way up to 30 frames per second. And you could also do your bit rate. Your bit rate is like how much data is actually flowing over to Blue Iris. You can see the bit rate for the substream is a lot less. That's the whole point of the substream is to allow Blue Iris a stream that's a lot less difficult to manage for certain tasks like previews. And then for when it sees motion, for example, it could then record the mainstream, which has 30 frames a second and you know whatever that is, a bunch of times more bit rate, uh, depending on what you have it set at. So the first thing is to make sure that the substream is turned on inside your camera. So now if we click back over to Blue Iris and right click on the camera, go to camera settings, go over to video and we'll have to go to configure by the way you can do this when you set up a camera um, my camera i wasn't sure had the substream set up so i wanted to make sure of that before i did that so that's why we're going to do it in this particular video click on sub and then we're going to go uh, media profile channel one substream one and click ok and we'll click OK again. Camera will refresh. And now you can see it got a little bit grainy. Why is that? Well, it's showing me the substream to limit the CPU. Look at what our CPU is at, 1%. Now granted, this is a pretty powerful computer that it's on. But if you had 12 cameras at home like I do, or if you had up to 64, like Blue Iris supports, now we're at 0%, um, your preview, you might want these pictures to be in a lower resolution and that way it, it it still is going to record with the mainstream if it sees motion or um, other you know you can set other attributes for why it would use the mainstream but for the substream it would be perfectly fine to look at my uh, butterfly frozen in time so let's just right click again go to camera settings and make sure that we have substream. So we can see 2.1 megapixel is the mainstream, 0.3 megapixel is the substream. So now that is coming through. So that's how you set up a substream on Blue Iris. First, make sure your camera is sending the substream and supports it. Uh, most modern IP cameras that are on VIF um, or RTSP do support a mainstream and a substream. And then go into Blue Iris and make sure that it is set up as well. Um, it is a good thing to do. I would recommend using substreams in Blue Iris. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Blue Iris content. We will see you in the next one. Take care.